Dr. Ragusea, before we went to break, you said that the number of people who are mentally ill in our prisons is six times the population of the Florida Keys. So why haven't we stopped this? And the answer is, it's a lot about money. Um, let me give you an example from outside of Florida. Los Angeles has gargantuan prisons. They are built as towers. There are about 3,000 prisoners in a tower in the city of Los Angeles. This is just Los Angeles' jails. Okay? Uh, one of those towers holds about 2,500 mentally ill patients. One of the towers. One of the towers. So it is a jail that houses 2,500 mentally ill people. Okay? Now, it's not big enough. So what they're doing in Los Angeles now is they're trying to solve that problem by building another bigger tower that is d designed in such a way that the estimated cost is over a billion dollars. So that's what they're going to do to solve the problem. Just build another facility, a billion dollars, and isn't that coming out of the people's wallets? Of course. All of our taxes pay for that kind of thing. Here in Florida, we're talking about building another prison because the prisons are so overcrowded. It's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build. A lot of those p beds that are going to be put in there are built for prisoners. Somebody's dangerous, but not for the mentally ill. But they're going to house people who are mentally ill. And, and the reason why it's done, quite frankly, is because it's a whole lot easier for legislatures to get behind spending money on jails than it is to get behind spending money on the mentally ill. Mm -hmm. It's, and I'm not using this word casually, it's a crime. It's criminal. What we've done is made our prisons de facto mental hospitals. Mm -hmm. They are where we take the people who are our family members our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our aunts and our uncles who are primarily mentally ill and we're putting them in jail behind bars where they get maybe an hour or two of treatment a week as opposed to putting them in hospitals where they get care all day long. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. It's morally wrong and it's financially stupid. Right, because that's costing so much money for the mentally ill in the prisons because of all the medications. It costs, oh, not just that, it's because of all the guards. Mm -hmm. Well, it's much cheaper to have somebody treated, number one, in a state hospital than it is in a state prison because the state prison has to have guards, machine guns, surveillance cameras, uh, barbed wire and everything else that goes with jails. In a hospital, you don't need all that stuff. Right. Okay? Then if you say, well, let's treat them in an even cheaper way in their communities, then what you need is simply ways to pay for treatment in communities so that community mental health centers or private practitioners like me can treat people who are in need of care. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that because the legislatures don't feel comfortable standing behind that kind of legislation. I once testified, this was uh, in Pennsylvania, I testified before the House Judiciary Committee and um, uh, I was talking with the, 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 the representatives, no it was the Senate Judiciary Committee, they're senators, and um, I said to them, you know, you, we really need to fix this thing that's wrong. And one of the legislators picked his head up and he said, well, you know, if I go back and tell my constituents that I'm going to let these people out on the street, they're going to throw me out of office. But if I tell them that I take these dangerous people and put them into a jail cell, they're going to reelect me because they know I'm protecting them. And I said, Senator, you have to learn to be smart on crime, not just tough on crime. And everybody who was there went, ooh, like that. And I suddenly realized, oops, I just insulted this guy. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, and I did. But he deserved to be insulted. Um, our state 
senators and representatives, our federal elected officials, have let many, many problems go untended to. And this is one of the most important. Mm -hmm. We're wasting enormous numbers of tax dollars. It takes, just so you understand, it takes um, about $35,000 a year just to pay for a prisoner in a, in a prison. Okay? Um, and that, that varies widely from a bottom of about 25000 to a top of nearly $100,000 a year, depending on what kind of prison facility you're talking about. Okay? So but as an average, we say 35000 It costs twice that much to take care of the mentally ill in prison. So it, it, it's not just evil in the sense that we're hurting people who deserve humane care but it's also wasting our tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly stupid, and we don't seem to learn. Mm -hmm. um, more and more people are getting behind this. There have been um, prison officials from many states that have demanded change. Uh, 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 Nightline on TV ran a series uh, lasting weeks about the problem uh, that I'm talking about here today. And it periodically pops up, but nobody fixes it. Mm -hmm. um, we now are confronted with a situation that occurred in Washington, D.C., where we now know just short, uh, a few days ago, this fella who was psychotic and delusional and thinking that people were putting radio waves into his brain, went around and killed, I forget how many people now, 18 people or something like that, near Washington, D.C., um, and, and this man was mentally ill. He wasn't evil. He, he was just sick. And he was getting these messages. He sought help, told people he needed help, and he didn't get the help. Mm -hmm. Next thing he knew, he was out there with a shotgun pill killing innocent people. Right. And even that will only be talked about in the media for a day or a week and then it'll disappear. We got to fix these problems. Um, and this is one problem that can be fixed relatively easily, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Just by putting more mental health hospitals in communities. That's correct. That's mm -hmm. right. Our, our community mental health centers used to be beautiful places. They used to be very well funded, very well staffed. Um, most people like me um, would spend part of our time working in a community mental health center where we didn't make as much money, but we contributed to the mental health of the community. Okay? And then we'd also have a private practice on the side where we'd tend to make more money. Um, now, there are no psychologists at the community mental health center in Key West. None. Um, there used to be one. Now there are none. Um, it's typically staffed by people who are undertrained, quite frankly, people with bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. There are um, uh, very few doctorally trained people there. And uh, there's one psychiatrist who takes care of all of the patients that need to be seen, and he's totally overwhelmed. Right. Um, and, and the company is owned by a corporation that is a national corporation, this community mental health center, with headquarters in Las Vegas and the Virgin Islands, the Bahamas, excuse me. And um, uh, so it, it isn't even a local community organization. What it is is part of a national corporation with executives that live thousands of miles from here. Um, what we're doing is wrong. It is wrong. And we've got to fix it. Yeah, absolutely. When, when will we finally wake up? We're going to take one more break this morning, but we will wrap up mentally ill in prisons when we return from these messages.